Okay. Good evening. Okay. Today I'd like to share a small exhortation or encouragement. Okay. Uh, so I will maybe if I have to t- uh, title this message, I would call it as a healing word to the sick. A healing word to the sick. Turn your Bible to Second Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Why people are sick today? Why Christians are going through suffering today? Uh, how can we, even in the midst of sickness, how can we have a victorious Christian life? In the, in the, you know, so many, uh, uh, so many Christians that we see, uh, if we just see and talk to them, someone or the other, somehow or the other, they have some kind of pain in their life, sickness in their life, physical ailment, okay? A lot of things. And um, so Christians are suffering also physically. They have sicknesses, uh, diseases. So, And uh, how can we be encouraged in the midst of such kind of sicknesses and pain and physical ailment? How can we encourage some of the Christians who are going through all this? So maybe today we can see from God's word, as we will see a healing word to the sick. A healing word to the sick. We, when we read the life of Apostle Paul, we don't see that he was a man who never had any struggles and troubles and problems and sickness. But we find the opposite in the life of Apostle Paul. What we see in his life, uh, we find that he was a man who had much struggle. He was persecuted physically. He was tortured. Okay, He was beaten. And we find, even uh, when we read the book of Philippians, you know, he says about, um, in the book of Philippians, he uh, speaks about the struggles that he had, uh, where he is, you know, he says, he's, he's gone through pain, he's gone through the perils and poverty, and all the, okay, and all the struggles in his life. And then he says, yet, I rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Hmm? Chapter 4. No. Okay. I know both how to be abased. I know how to abound everywhere in all things. I am in, instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer, need. Okay? And there are other places where he mentions about all his struggles that he has been going through. And so what we see in the life of Apostle Paul, we don't see that he is a man with, you know, absolutely everything is fine with him. No. He is going through much struggles in his life. A lot of struggles in his life. He even had a physical problem. He had sickness in his life. Okay. So it is not a surprising thing if a Christian is sick. Um, You know this flesh is under the curse. Right. Our spirit is saved. Amen? Amen. Our soul is saved. But this flesh is still under the curse. And that's the reason why many people go through sickness and struggles and physical problems. But as a Christians, when we suffer, how can we yet in the midst of this sickness, we can have a victorious Christian life? How can we rejoice? Let us see what Paul did. This man who was beaten, this man who had sickness, okay? this man who was persecuted, this man who was rejected, this man who was hungry. You know, if we compare our life with Apostle Paul, ours is nothing. He was dragged, he was beaten, he was whipped, he was chained, he was in prison, he was in hunger and sickness. And yet, he teaches a lot of great things as a Christian. He teaches in the midst of sickness, how can we still be victorious? Okay? And why all these struggles come in our life? When you see in chapter 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we find Apostle Paul giving... His testimony, we find in the Bible, 
in verse number 7 of chapter 12, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now we see Apostle Paul establishing so many churches. Apostle Paul writing almost 13 epistles in the New Testament. Apostle Paul has been used greatly by the Lord. Okay, he was given revelation, he was taken up to the, uh, you know, he was caught up and he has seen certain things which is unlawful to utter here. And so he is mentioning all this thing and he's saying, you know what, in order to humble him, God allowed something to keep him humble. Many a time we have to realize when we go through struggles, we have to take it in the right spirit. That God is trying to speak to us. God is trying to tell us something. These are not the time when we go through struggles and sickness and pain. It is not the time to be bitter against God and against God's will and against God's word. This is the time to come more closer to God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling we need to draw more closer to God so that God can fulfill His plan and His purpose in our life. Okay. And so what we find, Apostle Paul is saying, And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. It was something to do with his physical problem. It was something, something to do with his health. Okay, A thorn in the flesh. Sickness. The messenger of Satan... To buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Okay, so he's saying, you know, that I should not become proud. You know what was what happened to me? There was given to me a thorn. It is kind of a gift. You know, given, kind of a gift to keep us humble. It is painful. It is very easy for me sometimes. Not understanding the pain what a person who is suffering with physical problem what he is going through. It may be easy for me to preach. But the truth is, Apostle Paul has been going through all these sicknesses. And yet, and he realized why he is going through all these things. Okay? And so, in order to keep him humble, let us also take this as sometimes, you know, like especially when we talk about Brother Santan. You must consider this, okay, the Lord is trying to tell me something. Maybe the Lord wants me to keep me humble. Um, maybe He has some purpose to fulfill in my life. And when we take these things in a spiritual and a positive way, in a scriptural way and in right spirit, we are allowing God to fulfill His purpose. And also, we are giving glory to God when we say, Lord, you know what is best for me. I don't enjoy this. I'm suffering. I'm struggling. But I'm not enjoying this. But you know what, Lord? If this gives glory to you, I'm happy. Amen? Amen. If this gl gives glory to you. I know it's painful. But if God gets the glory, then that is all that we need to live for. Because we know one day we are going to go to heaven where the Bible says there will be no more sorrow. Today I finished my Bible reading or book of Revelation this morning. And, and you know what? The Bible, when we read, it says, it finishes in a wonderful way. It says what? There will be no more tears. Hmm? Um, no more, where it says? I marked it. Okay, here, Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You know, until we get up to heaven, there will be tears in our eyes. The moment when we go up to heaven, what He's going to do is, He's going to wipe all our tears from their eyes. Amen? Amen. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. Nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Okay. 
there are something that we need to deal in life well, which is really painful but we need to take it in the right spirit and say Lord I'm not enjoying this it really pains me but if this is giving glory to you Lord okay I'm willing to go through that I'm willing to take up my cross and follow you daily amen because you know what Jesus did much for us he went through that suffering he died on the cross that nail pierced through his hands that arrow the spear pierced through his rib the crown of thorns you know just punched under his head on his on his uh, crown he went through all the suffering and so apostle paul says it was given to me so that i may remain humble the first thing we can say okay maybe the lord wants to keep me humble let me be humble okay you know why why god does so that we may be depended upon him this is not the time the time of sickness is not the time to run away from god it's a time to draw more closer to god amen? amen the time of doubt is not to doubt more but during the time of doubt we need to trust god more amen, amen. during the time of struggles and pain it's not the time to lean upon our own understanding but to lean upon god and upon his bosom where we draw comfort and where we draw joy amen yes it's painful but if it if god gets the glory we got to be happy and then what he says is in verse 8 for this thing i besought the lord thrice that it might depart from me he's saying i prayed three time because it is very painful in my life and my flesh is a thorn in the flesh okay it is some kind of sickness that he went through just imagine when he uses the word thorn in the flesh you know when a thorn pokes you what happen it pains badly right he's really going through much struggle and pain physically it really is paining him badly where he cannot control but then and because of that he is praying to god and he prayed three times Okay now this man who was actually healing others by the gift that he had he is living now to see that he himself is going through sickness and now he is praying to god uh, and he asks god three time that this sickness may depart from him verse 9 so when in the time of sickness what we need to do we need to pray amen during the time of sickness we must understand god wants us to be humble God wants us to be God wants us to pray. That's right? A healing word to the sick. First, be humble before the Lord. Say yes, God is trying to talk to me something. Let God get the glory. I will depend upon him. Second, pray. Spend more time in prayer. Spend more time in prayer. Okay? God gives us more extra time when we got when God puts us on our bed means he tells us to rest for a while so that we can pray more to for to him amen that we could pray more sadly people who are sick sometimes they get bitter against god and they never pray they never read god's word no that should not be our condition that should not be our uh, our, our life we should be like apostle paul when we are sick we need to pray amen amen, amen. and verse 9 and he said unto me who jesus is saying to paul My grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness amen? amen you know in the midst of sickness we have to accept god's will in our life right whatever god's will is it is sufficient for us my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness it's only you know what it's only when we are weak we can draw strength from god otherwise we will never realize who is stronger many a times people when they are healthy what they think they are too strong and they can do every thing <laughs> right it's only when we become sick then we know we can do nothing only god can strengthen us only god can change our weakness in, into strength amen? amen so during the time of weakness what we need to do depend upon his strength for when i am weak then am i strong Okay so during the time of sickness let us depend upon his strength 
and and draw more grace from him by depending depending upon him and giving glory to him most gladly therefore he, just imagine he's not complaining is not a man who is complaining but this is a man who is rejoicing because he says well god is getting glory with my thorn in the flesh and so i will rejoice okay most gladly therefore i will rather glory in my infirmity yes i am sick and so i'm going to glory in my infirmity amen when was the last time we re- heard from a christian who was sick and he said well i heard from many christians very many christians who said well brother if god wants this to happen in my life if god gets the glory i'm surrendered to his will amen, amen. a lot of christians and we as christians we have to have such a mentality when we are sick we need to know god wants us to be humble we need to know god wants us to depend upon him we need to know god wants us to pray to him we need to know that we can draw strength from him when we are weak amen, amen. and what he says is most gladly therefore i will rather glory in my infirmity that the power of christ may rest upon me you see one thing what he's saying is when i'm weak when i'm sick the power of god will rest upon me the power of christ will rest upon me amen, amen. this will never happen if we don't do the above three things humble pray and draw strength from christ amen, amen. when we do these three things you know what will happen we are having the power of christ resting upon us never be bitter against god never be bitter against god's will okay pray and see this is how paul came out from his situations of pain because he gave glory to god he humbled himself he prayed yes god can heal and yet and these words itself is the healing word to the sick amen? amen most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me when i glory in my infirmity say okay god is going to get the glory i am not going to get bitter against him i give glory to god you know when you do that and when you pray to him and when you draw strength from christ you know what's happening the power of christ rests upon you you become more spiritual because you come more closer to god you draw closer to god you trust god you lean upon him Sometimes we are so busy in in all our work we do everything but we don't have time for God and then what God does is sometimes he says okay here it is take some rest and spend some time with me i need a date with you amen god wants to spend time with us and god wants us to spend time with him because when we were well we did not give enough time And so now God wants us to give time for him. So let us make use of this time and give him all that he wants, all of our life, all of our pleasures, all of our desires. Lord, thy gl- will be done. Thy if if thou gets the glory, I am done, oh Lord, I am surrendered to thy will. Okay, God wants us to speak to him. God wants us to fellowship with him. That's why many a time, you know, you talk about the young people, young Christians, when we are young and healthy, we don't want to do much for god hmm and then when we down when we fall then we get bitter no get closer to god when we are too busy for you know when you get busy in god's business then god gets busy in your business amen he will take care of you he will take care of you give time okay talk to him pray to him draw strength from him humble yourself and glorify rejoice glorify him say lord i don't enjoy this certainly i don't enjoy this this is too painful for me this is not what i like but lord if you are going getting the glory here am i i surrender all have thine own way lord thou art the potter i am the clay amen mold me break me mold me and fashion me in a way that you want me to be that's the healing word to the sick today most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmity that the power of christ may rest upon me yes my friend when you will depend upon him his power will rest upon you when you become closer to him he becomes closer to you that's what the bible say draw nigh to god 
and God will draw nigh to you. Amen? Amen. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Then, we are, then you see this. See, this is a radical Christian who is going through sickness, who has so much of pain and struggles and sickness. Yet, look at his words. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Because of Christ. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it as a pleasure. This should be our mentality. No, it, it, you know, if I would just say, hey, come on, man, just, just, don't do that. Then it will be a hypocrisy, right? But talking about Paul who really went through and he is saying means, then when we read about it and say, wow, this is what Paul said and he was the one who was going through all this thing and if Paul can be like that, then I want to be like Apostle Paul. Amen? Amen. That's what Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay? Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity. You know what pleasure in infirmity is? You know, we take pleasure in all good things, right? We take pleasure in love. We take pleasure in a lot of things. But here Paul is saying, I take pleasure in my infirmity, in my sickness I take pleasure. Because God wants me to be humble. God wants me to pray to Him. God wants me to spend more time to Him. God wants me to draw strength from Him. God wants me to give glory to Him. God wants His power to rest upon me. Wow, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. Not for anything, not for me, not for you, but for Christ's sake, I take pleasure in my sickness, in my infirmities. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Paul knew really what Christian life is all about, even in the midst of sickness. He knew how to give pleasure to God. He knew how to draw strength and pleasure from God's will. He knew how to be humble, how to pray, and how to give all the glory to God. He knew that God's grace is His healing, even when His body was hurting. Amen? Amen. He knew God's grace was His healing, even while His physical body was hurting. And so He says, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Wow. I hope that we will draw strength, and especially Brother Santon, that in the midst of all this, let us give glory to God, and pray to God, draw strength. God is able to heal. And let God's will be done in our life. Okay? And so take pleasure in infirmities. Give glory to Him. Let, God's, let Christ's um, power rest upon you. Okay, and so give the glory to God and spend more time. Maybe He wants you to spend more time to God. Okay, more time with God. So spend more time. It's like a date with Jesus Christ. Okay, He loves to spend more time with God's people. So I pray that this be a healing word to you, just like what Apostle Paul went through, that we can rejoice. It's only when we are sick, you know what we have? We know there is a healer. Amen? Amen? Maybe this is a physical sickness, but there is another sickness called phys spiritual sickness. There are a lot of people in this world who are spiritually sick. And only Christ is the physician. And, all, and what people have to do is trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation, for the healing of their soul. Amen? Amen. That Christ Jesus died on the cross. He hanged on the cross. He shed His precious blood. He died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. When these spiritually sick people trust in the shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, their sin-sick soul shall be healed by the great physician, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shall we pray?